Welcome everybody to another session of Ask Me Anything. And I'm really excited, you know, today about our guest that we have sitting here on the hot seat, you know, being our resident subject matter expert. Um, but I, I'm super excited about the conversation that we're going to have today. And our session will last for just a little under an hour. If you've joined the video, you'll be able to see our guest and you'll see the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. If you have something you'd like to ask anonymously, just put it in the chat and I'll be happy to share it with you. So our guest today, man, what can I say about DJ Mandy Mixes? So Mandy Mixes has an extensive background, not only as a DJ, but also as an event producer. And as you might've noticed, some of our expectations around events has needed just a little bit of modification during COVID times. Anybody notice that? Kind of, kind of seems like the, the order of the day. And Mandy has had to adapt like all of us. And her energy, her excitement, and her enthusiasm has clearly risen to the occasion. If you haven't attended one of her virtual dance parties, some that include music trivia bingo, then you truly do not know what you are missing. So without further ado, I want to just get this party started. And so, man, DJ Mandy, tell us what, what in the world is going on in your corner of the world these days? Hi, Patty. Wow, what an intro. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, uh, things are definitely different these days, aren't they? A lot of online virtual stuff. In fact, I'm sitting in my house in an extra bedroom we have, and you'll notice I have my DJ set up over there because that's where I do my virtual events. So um, yeah, I'm um, just trying to keep people happy and like keep the, the love going and just, you know, music is obviously sometimes people call it therapy. So I've just been trying to do any kind of online events that might help people get a little cheer going. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, I do the Friday night virtual dance parties and I have a theme. In fact, I have one this Friday that's a Halloween theme. Mm -hmm. And yes. then I do Tuesday trivia music bingo. So yeah, I've been just trying to do that. I've even done a few virtual weddings, um, a whole new world. <laughs> wow, a virtual wedding. Okay, I, I have to know how, how did, is a virtual wedding done? So thankfully the bride and groom actually were pretty clever and they had some cute ideas. They used breakout rooms kind of as like the reception tables. <laughs> so they gave, yeah. So they gave me ahead of time, they gave me a list of all their guests and like the name, they preset the breakout rooms and zoom. So, you know, like, okay, these people go in this room. And so after the ceremony, we did the breakout rooms and that was really fun. Um, and then they also had um, at their house where they got married, they had a couple different cameras set up. So I was in charge of using like the spotlight feature in Zoom and then I would spot like the aisle camera, we called it, or the ceremony camera. And so we would kind of do that. We even had a camera for the little flower girl that was at a, you know, a different house back at her home. Oh um, my think, gosh. Yeah, I think even out of state. So that was really fun. And then they did the shoe game. I actually have a video up on my YouTube channel of a little promo video of what I put together if anybody wants to check that out and truly see what it looks like. But yeah, and then we just did a little um, quick mixing of some music for a little, reception dancing at the end and wow. it was really fun it was really interactive and the bride and groom even sent the attendees a goodie box with um a cookie that was made from the exact same they had a red velvet cake so they had red red velvet cookies and yeah that was really fun <laughs> wow man love will win out right yes <laughs> um, and and before i forget because you mentioned your youtube channel what is your youtube channel called because i'm going to go look at that wedding okay <laughs> so right now i need 100 subscribers before i can get that vanity url so basically Ooh. if you just go into youtube and you search dj mandy mixes or just mandy mixes it should pop up so, okay all right yeah. so everybody you heard the shout out go out there subscribe so that she can get a vanity url <laughs> So that way I can say, you know, youtube.com backslash, you know, whatever. So exactly. can't do that yet. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, you mentioned about um, wanting to make people happy and wanting to bring a little bit of cheer. Uh, you know, there is, there's a lot of conversation about that, that um, it's one thing when this was just 30 days or it was maybe three months, you know, but now that it doesn't really look like there's any end in sight anytime soon, you know, trying to do things that bring people's spirits up and, and you know, gives people a little bit of, of fun is, is really, really great. So 
I would imagine that's kind of the idea behind your online dance parties. Um, is that sort of what you were thinking is how do we raise the roof a little bit? Yeah, exactly. Just a way to, you know, kind of have something fun to do on a Friday night. And I don't ask people to pay. I ask if you want to tip or donate, that's great. But I know a lot of people are, you know, facing financial hardships right now. So it's just my way of kind of giving back to the community, if you will. I mean, I have all this wonderful equipment that's just sitting here not being used. So um, I'm just doing that. And yeah, I definitely need, um, we need some smiles on our faces. And I even, I have a little uh, fake dance floor down there, or not fake, it's actually real. It's a little tiny dance floor down there and I'll get down there and be silly and dance with people. And um, just, you know, you can laugh at me all you want. I don't care, you know, that's, that's fine. And then I'll even throw in some little music um, trivia with the, um, the songs I'm playing at the virtual dance parties just to kind of mix it up and not be just, you know, me playing a bunch of music and you're staring at me. Well, usually people are dancing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of kind of mix it up with some little fun facts about the songs. I did that, especially for my birthday a couple of weeks ago, I did it and I talked about all the different songs that why I would be dancing to them in the club back in the day. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounds like so much fun. And I know that um, we, my husband and I participated in one of your trivia bingo um, events and boy, it's amazing how fast the competition comes up, you know, yeah. like you really want to make sure you've got that title and you've got that answer, you know, before somebody else does. So it was, it was, yeah. a lot of fun. It was kudos yeah. to you. Thank you. Yeah, those are a lot of fun. Yeah. But when we're talking about business owners, um, you know, it's creating an event is always kind of stressful for businesses anyway, you know, because it may not be directly in their lane, you know, and they're trying to come up with something, but with the extra added stress of everything having to be virtual, you know, what would you tell business owners to consider or ideas that they might have to inject a little entertainment in their online events? Yeah, well, we can, you know, one way to start just to kind of keep it simple that would just add one little element is I really suggest you get a co-host or a co MC or even a host at all. So let's say that you want to put this event on, let's say it's a client appreciation event and you don't necessarily want to be in front of the camera talking and leading it, but you want to be there obviously and get involved, get a host or somebody that can kind of, this is what I would do for you in person. I would lead your event and you know, all the housekeeping and all the, and just kind of keep the event of the flow going or the flow of the event, excuse me. And um, especially I think on Zoom too, because sometimes if there's too many people talking over each other, it can be hard to hear. And so, you know, kind of having that, but then also, if you do want to be the host, maybe have a co-host, think like a, a, a talk show, a nighttime talk show where you have that banter between usually the, the talk show host and usually it's either like their musician or right. somebody just to have that fun little banter to kind of mix it up a little bit. So that yeah. would be the first kind of simple, simple way to kind of change it up a little bit. And then you could take it a step further from there and bring in a DJ or a musician. We have a fellow CWI member, uh, Z, who's a violinist. She could come on and provide some entertainment for you. And even like with the wedding, using the breakout rooms as reception tables, maybe you could have, you know, a room like a violinist in one room, a DJ in one room and let people hop around to the different rooms, or you could assign them to the different rooms. You know, you wow. could kind of play around with that kind of idea. Yeah. That's great. I wouldn't have even thought about that. I mean, the whole idea of breakout rooms in the events is brilliant. I, I don't think I would have thought about that at all. So that's, that's really interesting. And I'm still, my mind is still spinning on that wedding. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It was definitely a whole new, it was a whole new world for me. It was, it was definitely, um, it was interesting, but it was a lot of fun too. So um, it's like, I had to learn how, a whole new job this summer. <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know. It's kind of, inspirational you know to think of people looking for a different way you know looking for a a new way to you know break out of the box and, and to just continue to have some fun regardless not letting circumstances you know get them down exactly so. exactly um uh, just real quick another idea too i was just looking over here at my notes is um if you don't necessarily want music you could also bring in a comedian you could do a, ma a magician um and if you're looking for these, you're like, where do I find this entertainment? I would start with Facebook and put it out there that you're looking for this because I always recommend that you hire a referral because, you know, you want to make sure you're, you know what you're getting, especially I feel like for an online event, it's even more important because mm -hmm. you need to make sure they're going to interact with your audience and not, I don't know, it's just a different element. Like, yeah. like I said earlier, I try to really interact with my crowd. Even when I have them on mute, I'm, I'm reading the chat as I'm playing my music and stuff just because I have them muted because of sound back reason, sound 
feedback reasons for the sound. Sure. Yeah. But I still try to interact by, you know, interacting through their chats and such. But um, there's also games that you could play. There's a, a website called Kahoot and you literally can have it up. You can do a share screen and show your screen and you can ask trivia questions and different things. And then all they have to do is they just pull out their phone and they don't have to install an app. It's just, they can go to the web browser in their phone and they can play along with the game. So you could do, oh. I mean, and you can create all kinds of games from, it could be related to your business topic or it could be music related or whatever you want it to be. Yeah, kind of like when you went into the bars and you got those little yeah. game players, you know, to play exactly. in the bar. That's, that's great. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah, creative. Just put on your thinking cap and there's like no end to what you can do. Yeah, there's because there's some really good resources out there. In fact, if you want, I can share um, a couple of those later with everyone as far yeah. as a list of ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned having a referral is really good, you know, because you'd like to use somebody that's been used by somebody that you trust, you know, just like we are with all of our referrals and things. Yeah. But, but let's say you get nothing, you know, and you, you're kind of flying blind and you've got five or six people who want to talk to you about being their DJ or their mu musician or their magician or what have you. Yeah. What, what kinds of things are you looking for that would be different from an in-person event and an online event? Well, I think they're very similar, although I do, like I mentioned earlier, I think the number one thing is how they act and react and interact yeah. on your online event. Because if you're just gonna have the person sitting there, now for let's say a violinist, that might be a little harder for them to interact, but maybe they could take little breaks and they could have a little chat session with them because maybe you could have it so that the audience asks questions. Mm -hmm to the violinist, I mean, I don't know, that may not work in that scenario, but let's say like for a DJ or any other kind of entertainer, you're gonna want them to, you know, interact with the audience and basically say, I see you out there, you know, good moves and all that kind of stuff, just to like make it feel like they're really, the audience is really part of the event and with the entertainer, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and I think, I think that'd be best. And also make sure that they have I mean, it's a little trickier now because this has only been for a few months, but try to find somebody who's got experience doing events on Zoom. And if they don't, maybe get on Zoom with them and do a little test run and just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you both get a feel for that's actually what I had to do at the beginning, a couple of, for the wedding and a couple, we did a couple test runs because it was new to both of us. And we right. have, you know, this whole thing is new. So, you know, if they're willing and flexible to work with you like that, I think that that would be a good sign that they might be a good fit for your event. Yeah. Yeah. I would think that's a, a big deal. That's not something you really want to just wing and hope yeah. for the best, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially if you're maybe live streaming it also on YouTube or, you know, it's not just recorded or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and the whole technology element of it too, just adds a, another level of complexity and where there might be somebody who's a great entertainer but yeah not really tech savvy you know yeah. so you kind of want to iron some of that stuff out you know yeah beginning. one thing I learned too is that I am very tech savvy but while I'm trying to DJ and interact with the audience and I sometimes have my daughter on a separate computer and she'll help me with the you know kind of uh, monitor the chat box so mm -hmm. again going back to either having a co-host or an ass assistant helping you sure. with that if you've so you don't feel overwhelmed. Right. And I think that's a really good opportunity too to work with other businesses, other small businesses and maybe sponsor each other or help you out help each other out somehow. I mean, I kind of think about I kind of think back to when I first started my business, what did I do? You you bartered a lot and I mean, I know that it's it's not fun that we have to do that again, but when we're learning something new, sometimes we have to barter or we have to, you know, maybe not do things we would normally do, but take the opportunity to you know, work with another business that might have that skill set that might be right. able to help you out. Right, right. Collaborate and partner with somebody. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I um when you think about in the theater and, and I used to to do musical theater when I was a kid, you know. Oh cool. And, me and too. they always <laughs> yeah, I imagined you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they always, you know, really stress that everything has to be bigger, you know, when okay. you're on theater. It's not just TV. Everything has to be bigger. Yeah. And I think that's really become even more uh, important again, you know, as we're living so much of our time in these little, little tiny boxes, you know, <laughs> for sure. I uh, attended a corporate um, conference recently, and it was a conference that I go to every year. It's a great, great conference, wonderful breakouts, wonderful speakers, wonderful keynotes, you know, it's just a, a really, really great conference. But 
taking something like that, that they had done very successfully year after year after year, and then suddenly taking it online was, you know, there were some missteps, there were some awesome things that happened as well, you know, but, but one thing really struck out, stuck out to me, and you will probably, you know, totally relate to this. At the end of one of the days, they had a very famous keynote speaker. And I was really excited, you know, to see this person and hear what they had to say and so forth. But they came on as if, you know, we were all sitting there together in a living room. There was very little interaction. It was, you know, clearly there was a screen between us, you know, and I lasted about 10 minutes into it. And I was like, I, you know, I can watch the recording later for that matter. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, It was just, there wasn't any pizzazz there. So, you know, that whole, that idea of going bigger, you know, have, have you found that in some of the things that you, you do, you're pretty big in life, you know, I mean, you do these big fun things, but (laughs) has there been anything that you've had to kind of rethink in that way? I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, focusing even more on the crowd. Like, so normally if I'm at an event and I'm DJing, I'm definitely watching the crowd, but I'm also kind of paying attention to my gear and kind of thinking about the next song and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I find myself more focused on the audience and less worried about the next song. Um, just because it'll, it'll be fine. It'll work itself out the next song, but I really want the people to feel like I'm there with them and I'm having a good time too. And I'm, I might dance a little extra silly and crazy just to, you know, like I said earlier, just to not only give them a giggle, but also to like, be like, okay, you know, make them comfortable because especially dancing on camera, but I, by the way, I always do give people the option. If they want their video off, I totally get it. That's fine. (laughs) But the ones that do have it on, you know, I want them to feel like they're not alone dancing and being silly, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. No, I think that would be part of the fun of it, you know? Yeah. Hey, look how crazy this is. Who who dances (laughs) in their living room like this? Yeah. Yeah. And I actually probably do, which in the beginning, it made me a little nervous, but I, I realized that it works is I talk more than I would at a normal event. Cause normally, mm-hmm. you know, you, do, you want the DJ to just shut up and play the music. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I found that if I don't interact, like it just it doesn't feel right. If I'm not <laughs> chatting with them a little and not too much, not, not enough to, you know, I never talk over the good part of the song, of course, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know, just maybe kind of in between songs or like when a part's coming, it's like, okay, everybody, you know, the words sing along, you know, and kind of you know, literally like going like this on camera to kind of get everybody's attention and stuff. So yeah, yeah. definitely bigger and more like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the DJ is sort of like an unofficial um, MC, you yeah, know, I mean, sure. like it, I, I noticed that at, at weddings when we were having wed- weddings in person, yeah. you know, the, the DJ was kind of setting the tone for, and now we're going to do the toast and now mm-hmm. we're going to cut the cake and, you know, and all of that. So yeah, for it's sure. an important role, you know, it's yeah. a, it's an important one. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely key. Like, like you said, for in-person and online, you know, if they don't, they're not, if they can do the music, great, but they need to be able to host an MC as well and keep that flow going for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you mentioned that if somebody's looking for some online entertainment, you know, they can go on Facebook or something, but is there, is there anywhere else? Are there any um, associations or, or businesses that have kind of sprung up in this time that are, are maybe booking people like that? Yeah, there's some, there's a lot of resources out there. There's a couple like gig masters is called one Um, gig salad, I think is another one. Mm -hmm. Um, If you, yeah, if you basically Google hire event entertainment, you could even go to the knot. I mean, I know that's more for weddings, but I mean, maybe you're doing a virtual wedding, but Mm -hmm. they're going to have DJs and musicians and all that kind of entertainment on there for sure. And I've noticed that a lot of now mark whether or not, you know, they do virtual or how, you know, comfortable they are with that, of course. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of resources out there and feel free if anybody wants to contact me, I can, um, you know, get them in touch with some of those resources for sure. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool. I I just think your business is really is fascinating and and a lot of fun. (laughs) And I have to say this too, if you're a business owner listening to this and you're not currently doing online events, I think you should be. And I don't want you to feel overwhelmed, even if it's just a simple you and a few of your clients on a Zoom. I think that's so important right now to stay in touch with our clients more than ever, obviously. Um, and just, you know, maybe take a couple of these little tips and apply them to your events. And maybe some of this stuff's not new to you. You're like, oh, I've heard all this before. I'm just hoping at least hearing from me will encourage you and, um, inspire you to do an event for your business. Cause I think it's really important to stay relevant and in front of your audience right now. And that's one of my biggest things too, is I don't want people to forget about me and, you know, come next, whenever it might be that we do in-person events again, that, you know, oh yeah, Mandy's still doing her stuff and 
things. So I think it's important to at least host at least once and maybe just, it, you know, it doesn't even have to be that often, just something. And I can help you guys if you need help with that. <laughs> I mean, that's huge, you know, just yeah. that, that staying relevant, you know, and, and maybe at the beginning we thought, well, we'll just kind of wait till this blows over and then we'll be back that's not going to work if it takes a year or more, you know, before things yeah. happen. So, yeah, that's a good point. I thought that literally from the, it was funny because the first week when it shut down, I was like, Hey, have you zoom for CWI and a few things? I wonder if I could somehow do music over that. Cause I know you can do Facebook live. Cause there's a lot of people that have done that. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to music, there's copyright issues and they're getting even more right. strict about that. So right. that was out, but I'm like, you know, I just, again, going back to like, Oh my gosh, people are going to need music more than ever. Cause music is therapy. Music is awesome. And so, that, anyway, so that's why I went to this, but that's a good point that you're saying that if some people were like, you know, I'll just sit back and kind of wait and see what happens. Well, now we're what, seven months in, it's like, there's no more waiting because yeah. if you wait, your business is probably not going to make it, unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That is so true. That is so true. Um, with, with Connected Women of Influence, um, because we had started some of these online forums, you know, over a year ago, yeah we were, I think, a little bit ahead of the curve. You know, we already knew sort of how to do it. We knew how people responded to it. But there are some associations who have just shut down. I mean, you're yeah. not hearing from them. You're not, you know, um, or, or they, they are so, this is not business as usual. This is not the way we do things. And can't, yeah. I mean, I think even if there wasn't a pandemic at some point, there may be a push more to do virtual. I mean, we're a technology world, right? Everything is shifting and changing all the time. You have to be able to be flexible. Mm -hmm. or your business definitely won't last, unfortunately, whether it's whether it's virtual stuff or it's just, I don't know, whatever another change could be, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, can you think of a business that maybe this wouldn't work for? You know, uh, uh, maybe not just the business industry itself, but like maybe a, something that it might not be as effective? I mean, you know, your first thought always comes to when you think of businesses that aren't fun. And I don't, I only say this because my friends are in this business and they've said this and I correct them. Financial people, for example. But you know what? Obviously it's fun to them because they're working in it. So they do numbers. I don't do numbers, but anyways, my, my point is, is that you could still do it if you're in the financial or tax industry or any of that, because you've got clients, right? Like I mentioned earlier, why not a client appreciation event, yeah. something, you know, and then, you know, you could, you could even have fun um, trivia games in there where if they refer, you know, they bring a guest onto the zoom, you know, you can give them a gift card for referring somebody and it's a way that you can get new clients just like you would at any other Kind of client appreciation type events. So, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so here's one for you. You need okay. to really put on your thinking cap and think how could you make uh -oh. this happy and, and lively? Okay. Um, I spent an inordinate amount of time in business meetings, you know, especially that were technology related with people that were all over the world. So our only option was to be doing it online. You know, you couldn't be in the same room. Make yeah. that fun. <laughs> Make that fun. Well, they do say music is universal. So no matter what country you're from, a lot of songs. Now, not everybody knows every song, of course, but um, yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, did they, did they do any kind of, they didn't add any trivia or they didn't, it was literally just a meeting and you just chit chat and yeah, I mean, maybe the co-host idea and maybe bringing in um, somebody that can kind of make things a little bit more, has a little bit more high energy. Cause sometimes if it's, I mean, any meeting, if the person running it, it's kind of drab and boring, it's going to be, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. I'll have to think on that. Like, yeah, meetings. like, I mean, because I guess it depends too, like, you know, what what's allowed and like, because, you know, sometimes That's with true. business That's stuff, true. you have to be careful. Like, could you bring in a comedian? Well, that might not be appropriate depending on yeah. what the topic is. And like, yeah. you know, I mean, the only thing I could think of right off the top of my head was literally just maybe add a little music at the beginning and do, you know how, did you ever go to conferences where they make you stand up and like, okay, everybody, you know, let's put some music on and we're going to get moving and get those bodies moving and like make yeah. people stand up at their desk and have little, um, not icebreakers. I mean, it's a little bit of that, but it's a, like a break, like a yeah. energy break. You know what yeah. I mean? That would be you don't awesome. need to DJ to do that. You could just throw on some music on your computer and play it yeah. for everybody. Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone is just sick of sitting behind this camera, you know, behind yeah. the screen, you know, like, yeah. like that. So, yeah, that, yeah, that, that would be true. good. Should have thought about that when I was in corporate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. 
So, you know, your business is, is very high touch, you know, very personal, very interactive. So what were some of those hurdles? You know, you've talked about a few of them, but um, like when you sat down and said, how do I do this? What were some of the things you were thinking about? Some of the ways that you were, were looking to bridge that gap, you know, with people? Yeah. Well, my first thing, just because that's the way my brain works, was the technology. How am I going to make this work? Because especially within Zoom, there are some issues with sound quality, which I don't want any of you guys to worry about if you're doing your own events. Like I said, if you're going to just throw on a little bit of music for your people to have a little dance break, don't even sweat it. But for me, I'm obviously an audio snob. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I like it to sound good, right? Especially if I'm doing a long event that has a lot of music. So I did my homework and research and I found a little device called an iRig Stream that I use that it's still not perfect audio, but it definitely helps. What's that um, called again? It's called an iRig Stream. Okay. A lot of musicians use it when they record, um, like if they can hook it up to their guitar and they record, you know, like when they actually create music, you know. Mm -hmm. I just play music. I actually <laughs> kind of create mixes and stuff. So anyways, I always say if I could be a musician or a singer, I would do that instead of DJ. But since I can't, I DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so I have total respect for musicians and singers. But anyways, um, so that was one of the biggest things. And then also just the financial aspect of it. Um, I knew in my heart, like I said earlier, I didn't want to charge people. I feel like especially in the beginning, because I know people were getting laid off. I mean, I know they still are, but I feel like it was almost a little more sensitive in the beginning. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to put it up there for tips and donations, but what about my bank account? So I started thinking of other ideas. Maybe I should go get a little part-time job. Yeah, that's going to stink, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So far, I haven't had to do that, but what I have done is I've taken um, something that I also love doing, which is designing. I do all of my own graphic designs and stuff, and I'm doing merch now. So I have, you can see these are my shirts wow. and stuff here. Yeah, yeah, so just trying to like get creative and think of things that it, it fits with what I do. Cause a lot of them, they're all music themed or they're my dance party logo or whatever. Um, but then also just, you know, not giving up and just keep on going and trying and making sure that I'm getting, I'm getting out there in front of my people, like I said earlier, and just staying relevant. And I mean, stay on your social media now is social media is better than ever. And I don't mean just sit there and read it or comment, like reach out to people, send them a message about something they post. Like maybe, Make it Facebook Fridays and every Friday you go through your feed and you, you, you see something that, you know, you can relate to that person and be like, oh my gosh, I love popcorn with candy corn too. That was something I posted the other day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, something, something like that. Just use that to really stay in touch with your people. Cause that, you know, was your question about staying in touch and staying mm -hmm. relevant. I even created a second um, Facebook account so I could friend any of my past clients. I know I probably should have been doing that before, but I always kind of used my Facebook more for personal. So I just made that decision. I mean, Instagram is everybody, it's fine, but there's just something about Facebook. It's a little bit more personal because you can, you know, see into their lives a little bit more and you can message people and all that. So just staying yeah. in touch that way. I've started some email campaigns where I've reached out to past clients, especially wedding clients and, you know, send them a little happy anniversary and let them know that I'm thinking about them. And I put little videos together for them yeah. um, and stuff like that. So I think that answers your question. Sorry, I kind of yeah, went on. <laughs> no, that is great. But hey, I have an idea for you. Yeah. Um, and I won't even charge you for this idea. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and maybe you're already doing it. But it's okay. like, you know, back in the day, long time ago, you know, when you could hire somebody to do like a candy gram or um, a singing telegram or something, you know, it would be great to call you up and say, hey, I want you to put together a little mix and video for my significant other, you know, for their birthday oh, yeah. or whatever. So there you go. There's another marketing stream. I program. love that. I'm definitely stealing that idea. I love it because I do have, I've been dabbling the last, only the last year or so with video editing and such. So I can do it. So yeah, oh, I love awesome. that idea. Yeah. I actually just, um, it's not, I'm not charging people for it or whatever, but if anybody wants a good Halloween playlist for um, Halloween night or any night, I put together on YouTube, back to YouTube on my channel, a bunch of Halloween songs, but I mixed in some dance ones, but I put in, some don't have videos, but some do. And it just reminded me of the nostalgia of um, watching MTV. Now I'm dating myself. Yeah, and you know what yeah. I mean? Like not just having the music on, but you can actually watch the video and kind of dance along and stuff. So I did that yeah. for Halloween and that's free to anybody that wants to go on there and do that. But mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Mandy, I, my head is just going, I'm like, you know, going crazy here with this. So first of all, 
where do people reach you? We, we've talked about YouTube. They can go and search for your, your stuff out there, but where else can they reach you? So yeah, the best place is mandymixes.com. And then from there, actually, you can find my YouTube channel and you can find out about my virtual events and all that. And I'm also on all the social media platforms as Mandy Mixes, just as it sounds. Um, yeah, or you can email me mandy at mandymixes.com. And it's Mandy with a Y. Yes. Not cutesy like an IE <laughs> or a little heart above it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mandy with a Y. Mandymixes.com. That's awesome. Yeah. So, hey, um, in our last remaining minutes here, what what else do you want people to know? How else do you want people to think outside the box? What do you want to, how do you want to encourage people in these last, these last minutes? Yeah, I mean, I think I would just like to reiterate that, again, if you're not using online events for your business right now, especially if your business is a little slow and maybe hurting a little bit, I think you should step out of your comfort zone and give it a try. Hire a professional. I also know an event planner right now who's completely, I mean, a lot of them have, but she's completely shifted. She'll completely host it for you. And she can even do it behind the scenes. So everyone thinks it's just you doing your event. Um, Cause I think it's really important to stay in front of your people. Um, especially if you have clients or an audience that you really need to stay, stay relevant and let them know that, Hey, I'm still here. Yeah. You know, when this is all over, don't forget about me. Don't forget to hire me. Yeah. Um, and one other kind of tip, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier, is think back to when you first started your business. What did you do to really get yourself out there and make yourself known? Personally, I partnered with a lot of people. I probably did a couple free gigs or really cheap gigs. I shouldn't say cheap, but you know, it was the money wasn't as much. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like you kind of have to, unfortunately, I know it's, it's a bummer, but I feel like you kind of have to get back to that whole mentality of, starting over in a way, maybe not completely, but trying new things and just really getting out there and getting out of your comfort zone and partnering with people. I think partnering is huge. I, for my Tuesday trivia nights, I, um, there's prizes, but I don't, I don't do any of the prizes, although I've done one of my shirts, but I partner with other businesses right. and people sponsor a gift and the gifts are only five or 10 bucks. It's just yeah. a little something for people to, you know, have a little, cause most of the people that have played so far, I so say they don't even care about the prizes. They just want to have fun. Right. It's just a little something, you know, to reward them. So I would say just don't give up and just, you know, give it a try. And as far as in-person events go, those are also important. And I feel like some of those are coming back. I think you can do some of those now if you have a smaller group. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions for me or want any words of encouragement I'm here for you so <laughs> yeah that's great and I, I encourage everybody to go look at mandymixes.com because you can find everything there is to know about about her work and, and about you know what you do and everything there as well as the links to YouTube and elsewhere and um, if there is an event coming up man I encourage you sign up for it because it's a lot of fun it's it's just a, a lot of fun and you know I found out I knew more about music than I thought I did so there Yay. you go <laughs> I know I wish I could put some music on for you guys right now but you know copyright and all we don't want yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> but yeah definitely I would love to see you guys at one of my events and I'm gonna actually I'll put all this into I was talking with Patty earlier I'll put all this into a little blog article for you guys so you can have it all at your access almost like a transcript sort of so yeah yeah that's great well Mandy I just want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us today and and bringing all this energy and enthusiasm we need this I mean we need to be uplifted we need to think outside the box we need to think the world you know hasn't ended for us that there's yeah, for sure. another way and if people can get married virtually then I pretty much think we can we can knock this thing out, right? I agree. I agree. Definitely. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time. And thanks to everybody who is watching this and listening and reach out to Mandy at mandymixes.com. Have a great rest of your day.